Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. Today I will discuss newborn hypoglycemia. Newborn hypoglycemia is defined as plasma glucose level of less than 30 mg per deciliter or 1.65 millimole per liter in the first 24 hours of life and less than 45 mg per deciliter or 2.5 millimole per liter thereafter. It is the most common metabolic problem in the newborn. Now the measurement of blood glucose using glucose reagent strip is unreliable, so use blood glucose analyzer or laboratory measurements. Now blood glucose drops naturally in first few hours after birth before normalizing. However, newborns have increased ability to utilize ketone and lactate for energy. Now all infants should be encouraged to feed in first few hours if well enough and check blood glucose in all infants who are unwell, lethargic or jittery. Now the causes of newborn hypoglycemia. These include number one, reduced glucose stores such as in preterm IUGR low birth weight babies and inborn error of metabolism. Second cause of hypoglycemia is increased glucose consumption which can occur in sepsis, hypothermia, perinatal hypoxia, polycythemia, hemolytic disease or seizures. Then hyperinsulinism which can occur in maternal diabetes mellitus, beckwith wiedemann syndrome and pancreatic islet cell hyperplasia. Then miscellaneous causes, maternal beta blockers or tissue or malfunctioning IV infusion. Now other rare causes include fetal alcohol syndrome, pituitary insufficiency and adrenal insufficiency. Now the clinical presentation. Commonly, the infant is asymptomatic or there may be jitteriness, tachypnea, apnea, poor feeding, drowsiness, seizures, irritability or hypotonia. Congestive heart failure and cyanosis may occur in severe cases. There may be macrosomia if hyperinsulinism is present. Now investigations. Blood glucose should be measured in the first hour in all high-risk infants. High risk group who need screening for hypoglycemia in the first hour of life include newborns who weigh more than 4 kg or less than 2 kg, large for gestational age, small for gestational age infants and infants with intrauterine growth restriction, infants born to insulin dependent mothers or mothers with gestational diabetes, gestational age less than 37 weeks and newborn suspected of sepsis or born to mother suspected of having chorioamnionitis. Newborns with symptoms suggestive of hypoglycemia, infants with significant hypoxia, perinatal distress or 5-minute APCAR score less than 5. Now infants with hepatomegaly, microcephaly, anterior midline defects, gigantism, macroglossia, hemihypertrophy or any possibility of inborn error of metabolism all need to be investigated. Infant whose mother is on terbutaline, beta blockers or oral hypoglycemic agents also need screening. Apart from regular blood glucose measurement, further investigation is not usually required if the cause is evident, for example in IDM. Now the first line test which should be taken in hypoglycemia include blood for glucose, insulin, growth hormone, cortisol, beta hydroxybutyrate, free fatty acid and amino acid levels. Also consider C-peptide, lactate and ammonia measurements. Urine for urinalysis, amino acids and organic acid should also be done. Now further investigations are required as guided by results and clinical biochemist. Now the prevention of hypoglycemia in at risk infant. Adequately feed the baby soon after birth and then at least 3 hourly. Monitor blood glucose level, pre-feed, keep warm and support feeding. Now the prognosis. Profound prolonged hypoglycemia can cause neurological damage but exact level duration after which this may occur is unclear. Now the treatment. In case of symptomatic or severe hypoglycemia that is glucose less than 1 millimole per liter, give IV bolus 3 to 5 ml per kg of 10% glucose and follow with 10% glucose infusion. In case of asymptomatic 
or glucose less than 2 millimole per liter or 2 to 2.6 millimole per liter on two occasion give enteral feed and inspect feed chart frequency and volume however if the infant is reluctant to feed then consider nasogastric tube feeding and if not tolerating milk then consider iv infusion in asymptomatic cases give early milk feed and monitor with pre-feed blood glucose levels now glucose infusion rate in milligram per kg per minute is calculated by the following formula iv rate ml per hour times percentage glucose in iv infusion times 0.167 divided by weight of the infant in kg now in the case of resistant hypoglycemia that is when glucose requirement is more than 8 mg per kg per minute seek specialist advice as hyperinsulinism is likely and increase background glucose infusion by central iv access now glucagon 0.5 mg intramuscular can also be given in emergency but in this case rebound increase in the insulin secretion can occur now treatment options in resistant hypoglycemia include diazoxide which can be given with chlorothiazide to counteract the fluid retention second is somatostatin or octreotide and nifedipine surgery or subtotal pancreatectomy can also be done now enteral feeding promotes normality aim to wean off iv as soon as possible now if high concentration of glucose that is more than 12.5 percent is required then central IV access should be used and monitor plasma sodium if the infant is on IV fluids. Okay, thank you. Please subscribe.